What's going on, everyone? So, DeMar DeRozan recently spoke uh, about his free agency and the Lakers. And here's some of the things that he had to say. Uh, this is with The Athletic. Yeah, you just learn how to deal with it from a business standpoint. DeMar DeRozan told The Athletic, when asked how the Lakers perceived lack of interest hit him. Obviously, I have my selfish reasons of wanting to be able to play at home, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes it probably isn't the best decision for me either. So after that didn't happen, I didn't dwell on it. I wasn't mad. They made their choice, and I just left it at that. Uh, he also followed up with this. Yeah, DeRozan said regarding if he believed he was going to end up in a Lakers uniform. Yeah, it did. But after the last time, the last situation, you really don't get your hopes up all the way up. I think the first time before I went to Chicago in 2021, that was the closest it had been. And even for me, I thought it was going to be that. But when that didn't happen, I didn't have high hopes because you already see how it could play out. Now, a couple things. First off, you know, DeMar DeRozan went to the Sacramento Kings, right? He wanted his money. Right? Like, again, Lakers had interest in him back in 2021. But according to DeMar DeRozan, one, he said he thought the deal was done. But according to DeMar DeRozan, he was mad that the Lakers wouldn't give him that extra year. So, again, if you really, like, if you really wanted to be a Laker, and that was priority numero uno, and you wanted to be able to put on that purple and gold and be a Laker, you would have been a Laker, right? Like, it, it's just, it's crazy to me. You, you wanted your money. Be honest. That's my thing. I don't mind. If DeMar DeRozan, Paul George, these guys, if they just came out and were like, hey, look, I wanted my bag. No, I wanted my money. Right? That's a priority to me over anything else. I wouldn't say a word. I would respect it. I'd love it. Go get your money. I ain't mad at you. I am mad that DeMar Rosen wanted to go make his $20 million a year or whatever it was. $22 million a year, whatever. I wasn't mad that he wanted the long-term contract. He's older. The Lakers weren't going to give that to him. But to sit here and act like the Lakers never had interest in him. and all this, They did. They just didn't want to pay you $25 million a year. If you were willing to sign for the taxpayer mid-level or something, you know, or if you were willing to, to take that discount in order to come, you don't think the Lakers would have done it? But you wanted the money. You didn't sign, he didn't sign with Sacramento for $11 million a year or $12 million a year where it's like, man, the Lakers could have went for, no, you would have had to trade several guys to make that happen. You would have hard capped the team. Again, and DeMar DeRozan, I was pushing for DeMar. I would have loved to have DeMar on the Lakers. But there was a lot of concerns and fit questions with DeMar DeRozan. I don't think he makes any sense for Sacramento. I don't. The last thing Sacramento needed was a non-three-point shooting player when they're second in the league every year in three-point attempts. They're also, like, number one in pace. They're usually in the top three in scoring. I know their scoring dropped significantly because they lost Malik Monk, but you can't make decisions based on potential injuries. They, they, DeMar DeRozan doesn't shoot threes. He needs the ball in his hands, and he's an isolation scorer that doesn't play defense, right? Now, Tyler, why'd you want him on the Lakers? Because the Lakers don't have anybody like that. They don't have that guy you can just give the ball to and he can go get a bucket. LeBron is more put his head down and bully his way to the basket or put his head down and shoot a three. But Sacramento, they have Malik Monk and DeMar DeRozan and uh, De'Aaron Fox. They don't need DeMar DeRozan. They needed another three and D guy. They should have went and pursued OG or Mikel Bridges or something like that. Right? They needed somebody like that. Now what? You're going to close games with Fox, Monk, and DeMar DeRozan with Sabonis and ooh. Or are you going to go even smaller and go with Ellis? Right, so you're going to go, what, Fox, Ellis, Monk, Damar, and Sabonis? You're going to get killed. Now, look, maybe it works. I'm rooting for them. You know, hope the best for you, right? I'm never going to root for somebody's failure. But Damar DeRozan and even Paul George, all these guys talk about is the Lakers. All these guys talk about is how badly they wanted to be Lakers and how badly they wanted to be play for the Lakers. And they always saw themselves playing with the Lakers. And you have like Paul George crying like, oh, we were treated as the B team. Well, yeah, dummy. Like 
You went to the Clippers. What do you expect? They're not the A team in LA. You thought you really thought what you were gonna change that? Stop. You know, like again, I don't mind these players wanting to be divas and they want to be courted and they want the bag and they want fine, that's fine. But be honest. Be honest. Damar, be honest. I wanted to be a Laker, but I wasn't willing to take the money necessary to be a Laker. Perfect. No problem. I get it. No worries. You know, but you've seen DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan went on like a press tour a year ago and every opportunity he had the interviews with like Taylor Rooks and all that. And like every opportunity he had, he just talked about how badly he wanted to be a Laker, how much it might be long. It might be like two years now, but he was on Chicago and it was in the off season, and the entire time he was talking about how badly he wanted to be a Laker, and you know he thought the deal was done, it was so disappointing, and all that stuff. And then they ended up trading for Russell Westbrook, and I knew that was it. There went my chance, so I went to Chicago, and you know he's talking and crying about how he didn't get to be a Laker, and now he's doing it again. Oh well, the Lakers didn't have interest. Yeah, the Lakers didn't have interest at twenty five million a year. Why would the Lakers? Why would the Lakers want Demar Derozan at that? And you have to sign him to a three, four year deal. Because remember, if you sign and trade for a guy, now it has to be minimum three years. He's 35. He's 35. The Lakers, if they if he was willing to sign for, you know, again, LeBron was willing to take a discount to bring in DeMar DeRozan. So if if DeMar DeRozan was willing to take the full mid-level exception. He'd be a Laker right now. He would. But him, just like Clay, they wanted the money. They wanted the bag, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want, then fine, go get it. But then don't sit there and cry and go, oh, it's the Lakers' fault. It's like, no, why would they pay you four years? I mean, he's making $23 million this year, 23 and a half. He's making 24, almost 25 in 2025. 2026, and then he's making almost 26 million in 2026, 2027. Again, like it makes no sense, and especially with all the risks and issues and questions. Again, I was a big DeMar DeRozan guy. Even dating back to last NBA trade deadline, I was big on the Lakers should go get DeMar DeRozan. Go get DeMar, go get DeMar, go get DeMar. I really wanted DeMar DeRozan, you know. And then, you know, when we found out DeMar wasn't going to be traded, okay, I was like, okay, let's pivot and let's go to Zach Levine. I still like Zach Levine. I've always liked Zach Levine's fit better, but DeMar DeRozan, I think, would have worked with Anthony Davis and LeBron. There were absolutely, without a doubt, questions and fit concerns, right? But I think that they would have been able to make it work because they don't have that over-the-top shooter, that isolation score. LeBron and AD can do it at times, but that's not really their game, right? Like... DeMar DeRozan is, is a bucket getter. They don't have that guy. I wanted DeMar on the Lakers because we needed a guy like DeMar who could just, you could give the ball to and just say, hey, go get a bucket. And he could do it, and he could do it incredibly efficient. You know, but there were still concerns. There were still like, hey, you know, how much is he going to need the ball in his hands to be effective? Is he going to be able to play off ball better, right? Like, there's a lot of questions about DeMar with the Lakers defensively. Right? How much of a liability is he defensively? But if you could have gotten him for you know twelve million a year or whatever, the 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 juice is worth the squeeze at that point. The gamble is worth it. The risk is worth the reward. But at twenty five million, now you're stuck. If it doesn't work out, you're stuck. You know, I look. I as much as the next person want the Lakers to make a move. I, as much as the next person, want the Lakers to make a trade. You know, so many people are worried, oh man, everyone got better. Who? OKC, in my opinion, got better. But OKC was already the one seed. And if they won the championship even without those moves this year, no one would have been shocked. They're that good. And then, but they also didn't get Kevin Durant in his prime. Like, you know, Alex Caruso definitely is going to make them better. You know, but they also have other, they have several other guys that, that fill that role and fill that void. Now, Hartenstein, I think, is the biggest pickup, but he's not, he doesn't solve 
the the lack of overall size that the Thunder have. There's still issues with the Thunder. Denver got worse. They're still going to be very good, don't get me wrong, but they got worse. The Clippers got worse. Right? Warriors got better, but how much better? Pelicans may have gotten better, but they may not have because the Pelicans, I mean, you got Brandon Ingram not even showing up to camp and stuff. Now it's voluntary camp, but still, like he's all, there's already the drama going on with him. And if you just basically swap Brandon Ingram for DeJounte Murray, they're not that much better. I think they're a little better, but I don't think they're now all of a sudden the top team in the league. Sacramento, again, DeMar DeRozan is great, but he doesn't make sense for Sacramento. He doesn't fit their play style. Not only does he not fit their play style, but he doesn't shoot threes, and they're one of the top shoot three-point shooting teams in the league. And they already have two isolation scorers that are best with the ball in his hand. How does he fit? Now they're tiny. Like, make that make sense. And then Clay, Mark Cuban himself said that the play style doesn't fit what what Clay's accustomed to, and the hope is. The, he literally said hope is. So their their plan is just to tuck Clay away in the corner and just let make him a catch and shoot three point shooter. Like that's not Clay's game. Is he capable of doing that? Absolutely. He's one of the greatest shooters ever. But he's also now. You're taking away his biggest advantage, which is being able to be a movement shooter and shoot off the dribble from three-point range, off, like immediately off the screen. Like, if you just tuck him away in the corner, it's it's easy to defend him now. If I'm the defender, I just gl- stay glued to clay. And Dallas got to the finals on the back of their defense. So, again, I how did teams get better? I don't really think so. I mean, the Lakers, oh, oh we'll see about health because Christian wanted Jerry Vanderbilt, but coaching, right? Like, we can't say that, like, oh, coaching's terrible and, you know, whatever, right? Like, and then go, oh, well, J.J. Redick, if he's a good coach, won't make a difference. Like, coach can't sabotage a team and not make the team better. Like, how much impact does a coach have? He either has enough to uh, impact and affect it or he doesn't. So, I think the Lakers are going to be better. But, we'll see. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What do you think? Uh, do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with my points? Are you somewhere in the middle? Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So, we enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. And that subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell and notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.